This is the first tutorial on using Manage DirectX with Visual Basic, uh, and today we're going to cover getting DirectX set up and initialized. Uh, obviously, the first thing you need to do is get Visual Studio downloaded and installed. Um, I'm using version 2005, but this should work with any of the newer versions. Um, you also want to make sure that you go download the August 2007 Source Development Kit for DirectX. You just do a quick Google search on it, it should be the first link. And why I recommend the 2007 uh, version is because if you go look at the release notes, um, it says that it was the last release that contains the Managed DirectX samples and documentation. And since we'll be using Managed DirectX, it's always good to have the documentation that goes with it. Um, so after you get all that done uh, and you start your new project, uh, first thing you want to do is you want to go up to your uh, properties and under references you want to make sure to add the DirectX, Direct3D, and Direct3DX uh, references and I also have Direct Input added here. Uh, we'll be using that later. Go ahead and add it now if you want. Um, just do that by clicking the Add button here. It'll think for a minute. And they're just right in the Microsoft set of things and there's the DirectX, uh, Direct3D, and there's multiple versions of the Direct3DX uh, reference here, and you always want to go with the latest one. Uh, the lower version ones are very buggy, uh, so I don't recommend using those. So after you get that done, um, you definitely want to make sure you import the uh, DirectX, Direct3D, and Direct Input namespaces. Uh, it just saves you some typing. And uh, now for getting DirectX initialized. Um, it's good to have a background color specified that you want to clear your screen to. We'll use that down below a little bit. Um, you're also going to want a uh, semi-global variable for your Direct3D device, uh, which represents your video card. And it pretty much anything you want to do to the screen, you have to do through your device or with your device. So you're going to be using it all over, so it should be somewhere handy. Uh, you're also going to need some present parameters. and uh, these are used in the initialization of your device to tell it how you want to draw things on the screen and set up some basic um, attributes. And I also have a Direct3D font here, which is used for drawing fonts, which we'll use later too. Um, so in my form load event, uh, I go ahead and set the window position to the top corner and uh, then set up my height and width. Now this just happens to be the resolution my computer monitor is running at. You can use uh, numbers that are smaller if you want. Um, then I show the window. And under the form paint event, I uh, call my init and run functions, which I'm going to detail down below. So the init function goes through and actually does the initialization of DirectX. And as you can see, it's only like 10 or 12 lines here. So it's not all that difficult. Um, First thing you want to do is in your present parameters, you want to tell the device what window you're going to be drawing to. And right now I just have it set to the main form. Uh, but you can draw to picture boxes and stuff, which we'll get to later. Um, uh, telling it that I want one back buffer, and that that back buffer should have uh, no alpha and 8 bits per color channel. Um, I, it's good to set your back buffer height and width to the same as your what you're drawing to. Um, the swap effect and presentation interval uh, I always set to discard and immediate. Um, the documentation does a good job of detailing what all of your options are for these and what they do, uh, so I'm not going to cover it here. Uh, the windowed parameter tells the device whether you want to draw full screen or not. Windowed to true means that I don't want to draw full screen. Um, the enable auto depth stencil to true will enable the auto depth stencil and um, we set the format to use 24 bits for depth and 8 bits for the stencil buffer and then we go ahead and create our new device so we do a, a new device uh, this parameter here is just saying what video card you want to use so if you have multiple video cards in your system you might have to use a different number but for 99 percent of people out there zero will be the number to use uh, we're telling it that we want a hardware type of device. Uh, you have to give it to the Windows handle that you're going to be drawing to. And we also specify for the various flags here that we want hardware vertex processing. 
and then we pass in our present parameters. Um, there's lots of other options for the both device type and the create flags. Uh, you should go look those up in the documentation. Um, there's too many to cover here. So uh, Next thing I do is I create my font, which we'll be using down below. Uh, first thing is it wants the device that we just created, uh, and then a font. And I specified the uh, text, or the typeface is impact, size 32, uh, want it to be regular, not italic or bold, and the, the graphic unit is a pixel. And then in our game run uh, function here, uh, first thing we do is we tell the device that we want to clear uh, our back buffer and our depth buffer, and we're going to clear to our background color, So the, and then the um, stencil buffer to 1 and the depth buffer to 0. Um, after we do that, uh, I tell the device that we want to begin drawing our scene, and I ask our uh, font drawing class to draw the test to the screen at this x and y using this color. So it'll be drawn at this x at about 50 units down. And then we tell the device that we're done drawing our scene. And then we tell the device to present what we've drawn to the screen. And then to make Windows happy, uh, I allow the application to do events. And this is necessary because, uh, as you can see, this is an infinite loop here. And uh, that infinite loop actually takes place in our form paint event, which is really bad practice, but for a little simple program like this, it works pretty good. Alright, so if we go ahead and run this, uh, we see that the form was cleared to black and that we have test written up in the corner. Uh, we also can do things like move the text around. You can see that test is now scrolling across the screen. Um, can also do it in full screen mode. And we also can draw to that picture box that's on the form. Well, I think that'll about cover it for this tutorial. Um, thanks for watching.